Hi there, Pyro. This is just in a response to your video. Thanks for that. Uh, I'm, I'm not explaining myself at all well, clearly here. Um, probably because I'm speculating a lot of this stuff. But I'm, I'm not speculating the way you think I'm speculating. You're making me come off like, I think, like some kind of uh, quantum denier or something. And that's not the case. I don't know as much about QM as you uh, seem to. But, you know, I've read quite a bit of the popular science writings about it. I've heard Stuart Hammeroff and Roger Penrose talk about it at various conferences. I heard David Bohm talk about it many years ago before he died. Uh, terrible speaker, kept dropping his microphone. But, yeah, I know a little bit about it. I know enough to know that it's as near true as makes the difference. It's certainly, the, I know it's the best explanation that we've got right now. So I'm not really talking about... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not in denial about that. That's, that's absolutely fine. I'm really coming from a position of associated to embodied cognition, um, from a kind of evolutionary psychology, that kind of stuff. That's that's the field of of, of interest I'm coming from, and la and kind of language. You know what I mean? Uh, and my you know the ideas that I'm kicking around here, and they are just ideas. I'm not; they're not terribly well supported. I'll be the first to admit that. Isn't that the um, isn't that the brain is Newtonian? You know, I've, I think I've gone to great pains to say that it isn't. It's to say it's to suggest that uh, a lot of the conscious functions that we have seem to model something approximating Newtonian physics. Uh, it's approximate, as I've said, you know, it's something more akin to folk physics, which is something like Newtonian physics, but not exactly that. Um, and and I'm speculating that because we have this tendency to model something like Newtonian physics in a world that is not Newtonian, or not best described by Newtonian physics, that mismatch throws up problems. I just thought, think I'd, I thought I'd try a couple of analogies just to see if I can make more sense of that for myself as much as for anybody else I suppose I mean it, it's pretty well established that it's really difficult to imagine some things in physics or some things in mathematics you know trying to imagine more than three dimensions it's very hard it's easy to do the maths you know anybody can ca can um, can calculate the the volume of a hypercube you know you just multiply the dimensions if there's three dimensions you get a, you get a cubic volume if there's four dimensions, you get a quadratic volume and it goes up from that, but it's, the mathematics is dead simple. But trying to visualize, <coughs> excuse me, trying to visualize a hypercube, a four dimensional, uh, you know, a, a, an object that's extended in four spatial dimensions, it's pretty much impossible. You know what I mean? We don't have the mental software for that kind of a visualization. And by analogy, what I'm suggesting here is, that, um, that our mental software tends to run something akin to Newtonian modeling processes on experience and occasionally falls short. We, we don't live in a deterministic world, as you rightly point out. It appears deterministic at certain scales, um, and, and we use Newton's laws to kind of describe that, but that's only a very small subset of the, of the total physics in the, in the universe. We know that. As I say, because we have this uh, this piece of software which is kind of modelling this small subset, and they're trying to apply that to the rest, it's like trying to visualise a tesseract, like trying to visualise a hypercube. That'd be one analogy. A second analogy might be more computation, um, uh, and I'd hope you agree that the brain is is, is some uh, some is, is performing computations. I'm not talking about Sinclair spectrums or Commodores, 84s. You know, I'm not talking about that kind of computation. I'm talking about massively parallel, probably quantum uh, computing of some kind. But it's, it's, it's a computational process, and mind or consciousness is one of the programs that's running, I would guess, you know, by analogy. Yeah. But again, my, my suggestion would be that it's running it for the purpose of allowing us to navigate the world in a particular way, you know, to service the needs of a body. That's our brain is there to service the needs of the body. Yeah. Um, so, so we're running, we're running a, a kind of software program which is appropriate to the kind of bodies we have. So, what happens when we try to feed data into that program? When we try to use that piece of computational machinery, computational software, 
to process data which is outside of its usual data sets, strange anomalies happen. And I think some of the anomalies show up in our concepts and show up as, as paradoxes in our concepts and show up in, in our language. And this weird language of free will and determinacy, I think maybe one of those um, strange anomalies, when I refer to as an artifact, I don't know this is the case, but that's the case I'm arguing, not, that's, uh, or, or speculating about and inviting anybody who wants to join me in that type of thing, have a kick around that. Um, I'm not denying quantum theory, you know, I'm really not. Um, I, I understand, I don't understand it, I don't have the grasp of it, you clearly do, but I, I know it's the best game in town. No, my, my particular take on it is this particular take to do with uh, what minds do, how minds work, what minds are for ultimately, and what they what happens when they try to tackle things which are outside of their uh, beyond their design spec. I hope that makes sense. It, it is quite interesting. I'm um, to try to try to find the best ways of describing these things. That's one of the things I really enjoy about doing this stuff. I've been repeating myself over and over again because it helps. It helps me a lot. Anyway, thanks very much. I wish I could get those little things to appear in the corner of the screen like you got there, Pyro. You know where you got your name up here, Pyro. I nearly wrote conference report actually on a bit of cardboard and hung it from here. You know what I mean? And then got some little plastic models and put them here. But obviously that's not what you're doing. <laughs> anyway. This is crap. Look at that quality of that footage and this, that crappy camera I used this morning. Oh well.